what is a fracture liaison service? That is a way to identify people who have had a fracture due to osteoporosis. Okay, and why should any of you care about that? Well, oh, first of all, this is um, uh, along the lines of what I just spoke about. This has been a project that I, I cannot do myself. I'd be moving a mountain all by my little old self. We're so fortunate to have collaboration with radiology, with um, um, uh, administration at the senior administration level at uh, Penticton Regional Hospital. We have quality improvement experts as well, and they're going to be uh, doing um, more of the analysis, and we have great hopes and expectations that we're going to publish this afterwards, and of course I have my wonderful staff Staff to make it a reality as well. So let's talk about why we need to care about osteoporosis. And you know, I, I do my best to every time I have my patients, I'm a rheumatologist, every single patient comes in to talk about their osteo. Oh, the osteo. I have osteo. We need to say the whole word, right? We've got osteoarthritis, wear and tear arthritis, which you know, I see a lot of too, but osteoporosis, this is a forgotten about condition. I'm not sorry that I put in a typo here because I want everyone to look at it because this is the most important part of my presentation is this typo. Less than 80% of Canadians will receive treatment. That's what I put in. No, less than 20% of patients who have had a fracture due to osteoporosis will ever get diagnosed, forget treatment. Now, if we were ever to say those type of numbers with you know, positive blood cultures or MIs, heart attack, stroke. I mean, my God, we would all be up in arms. But why is it that we have allowed 80% of patients who've had a fracture due to osteoporosis run around out there ready to have another one? It's complicated, right? It's common. It's very, very common. As you can see, um, one in three women are going to experience this in the next 10 years or so, and one in five. Another reason, unlike rheumatoid arthritis, you develop red hot swollen joints, everybody knows. Oh, knee jerk reaction, send off to the rheumatologist. Who takes care of osteoporosis patients? And I'm not even talking about primary prevention where you want to prevent the fracture. Who takes care of patients who have had a fracture? You have the orthopedic surgeon that um, is involved acutely, but then is it the GP? Is it the general practitioner? Is it a rheumatologist? Is it an internist? Is it an endocrinologist? We don't know, right? And that is why these patients fall through the gaps, cracks, and we have this massive care gap. And sorry, one last thing. I'm sure all of you know somebody or have had a patient who have had a fracture due to osteoporosis. 50% of those patients could have not had the fracture. It could have been prevented if they were treated. Again, incredible numbers, and yet we struggle to try to make a change with this. And that's what a fracture liaison service is meant to do, to make a difference and to at least identify these patients. So Sadia, I have to thank you very much for helping collect this information. This, I haven't been able to get anywhere else. Um, and this is just talking about inpatients at Penticton Regional Hospital. On average, I'm a big picture type of person, 200 admissions per year are due to osteoporosis. 200 admissions on average per year. Those people did not need to be there. Uh, and you can see it's pretty consistent year after year. Most of those patients came from the community, right? It's not because they slip and fell when they were in the hospital for something else. These are patients that needed that intervention um, before presenting to hospital. And in the elderly, and I think we can all agree, we just have a little more of the elderly population out here in the gorgeous Okanagan, the increased risk of having a subsequent fracture doubles. So what are we doing? What are we going to do with these patients that are clearly there and they're not getting identified? Oh, I've got a smiley face there. I don't know what that means, but thank you. So we need to find a cost-effective way to identify these people, to initiate treatment, and to ensure they continue on it because less than 50% of patients will be on medicines at one year. It needs to be sustainable. It needs to be able to be spread to other areas. 
So um, the, I would love to talk to you at the, uh, afterwards about the nitty gritties of it all, but you have to have, as I said, the village uh, to, to make this happen. So we collaborate with uh, radiology, and they now, thanks to this delay of uh, waiting for the hospital to be built, they are now going to help us identify who had a fall from standing height fracture of either the wrist, the back, the pelvis, the hip, or the shoulder. Those are the five patients over the age of 50. They're going to generate a list for us. And once we have that list, we can send off a, um, uh, a request for a consult to the GP to see this patient. Um, and in the meantime, we will order the appropriate investigations and bring the patient in to initiate therapy. Because I'm a realist, I care about osteoporosis, but I don't think a lot of other people do, right? We're all very busy. We were just talking about burnout back there. We're burnt out with what we are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm not going to ask somebody else to deal with a condition I think matters, but they don't. But we need to do a better job to identify these people. So once we're able to um, uh, find a way to bring these people into our clinic, then we will be able to uh, easily have them cared for and, and treated appropriately. So this is a, 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 a kind of a, a the, the flow of how it would go, and this is what is going to make this different than any FLS program in the country. Traditional FLS programs, you basically go on having a nurse walk around and identify people in cast clinics and in the emergency room or in uh, orthopedic suites. Instead, we are now going to identify every single patient that has had a traumatic fall at one of the five um, diagnostic imaging sites in the South Okanagan, every single one of those patients, we're going to know if they had a, a traumatic non-traumatic fracture or no, not. As I said, my nurse will then um, identify that patient, send off a request for a referral to the GP, that, and we order the appropriate investigation so that when that patient comes in for his or her appointment, we are all set to go, we have all the information we need, and we can talk about therapy, and the vast majority of these patients, because they've all already had fractures, are going to need treatment so that we can reduce their risk of subsequent fracture by 50%. So, oh yeah, I was supposed to take that one out, but I didn't. So uh, that, that's my presentation in a nutshell. We're really excited to get started very soon, um, I mean, within the next few weeks, now that, as I said, the hospital is open.